call this meeting of the Church Civil of Universal City Independent School District to order. Let the record show that a quorum of board members is present. That this meeting has been duly called and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act. Discovery Code Chapter 551. The time is now 6 p.m. Uh, Diddy, can we have a roll call, please? All board members are present. Thank you very much. This time, can we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? <coughs> to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On honor of the text of the I pledge allegiance to the United States, one state, under God, one and indivisible. <coughs> Thank you everyone for being here tonight. Uh, normally we have upwards of a couple hundred students each time for, for student recognition. Um, seeing that it's summer break, uh, obviously we, uh, I guess the parking was a little bit easier than it normally is, I understand. Um, we, we, we do have quite a few agenda items tonight, so we're going to go ahead and move along. Uh, I do want to just say real quickly for those members here of the audience, um, is anyone signed up for public comments at this point? Uh, we do have a special public hearing tonight uh, with regard, regard to the district facility needs and bond capacity. Uh, that's actually a separate agenda item. So if, if you wanted to speak on that particular topic, uh, I would just ask that you wait until we actually address those issues as part of the board meeting. Uh, otherwise, you can just talk during the public comment section. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, uh, at this time, we have Vice President's Recitation of district mission, vision, values, and priorities. Mr. Westbrook. Vision, prepare every student to be a productive citizen. Our values, leadership, character, commitment, service, and learning. Our mission statement, short symbol of Universal City, Independent School District provides a safe, secure, and challenging learning environment through the responsible use of all resources. Report. Opportunities for all students to realize their individual potential and to become responsible and productive members of society. Priority number one, high achievement for all students. Priority number two, high performing and engaged workforce. Priority number three, effective and efficient district and campus operations. Thanks, Mr. Westbrook. Uh, we'll also have the board recitation of the district belief statements. Uh, we believe all students have the capacity to learn and be successful. We believe a safe and secure environment is paramount to learning. We believe living our core values of leadership, character, commitment, service, and learning result in the ability to set and achieve lifelong goals. We believe quality instruction addresses the individual needs of our students. We believe engaging, interactive, and authentic teaching creates empowered, active learners prepared for our changing world. We believe embracing technology as a relevant tool enhances learning in and beyond the classroom. We believe in a professional learning community, PLC culture, that allows time to collaborate and share best practices in order to improve continually. We believe good communication is critical to success. We believe lifelong learning enriches staff through professional development. We believe measures of our success go beyond the standardized testing. And we believe public education is defined by the local community with limited state involvement. Thanks, board members. Um, and members of the audience, I, I see a couple of new faces out there. Uh, this is your school board. We're here to serve you. We're volunteers. Um, we all love what we do on behalf of the school district. Uh, the other members here around the board table are members of your administrative team. If, if you ever have any feedback or constructive input, uh, all of us would be more than welcome to, to hear what you have to say. Uh, as far as board meetings go, if, if you'd like to make public comments tonight, we, we do have a form in the back. You're more than welcome to fill that out and uh, share your thoughts with us. Uh, otherwise, um, our emails are public on the website. If, if you'd like to shoot us uh, something, you know, if you have something you'd like to, to tell us, but you just don't want to do it in a public forum, we'd be more than welcome to, more than happy to, to listen to your concerns as well. So, uh, yeah, appreciate everyone for being here tonight. Uh, at this point, Didi, it looks like we just have one yes, um, citizen sign up for public comments, and that would be uh, Dr. Irene for Tristy. Mr. Tristy.
Thank you, Dr. Gibson, Mr. Inman, school board members. I am up here to ask for your continued support of the SCUCISD staff members. There is an action item on today's agenda regarding the compensation package. And um, all the years that I have lived here, no matter what board members we've had, we have made a priority, especially for teachers and staff, that they are well compensated. It's always rough, especially when the legislature decides to do uh, something contrary to supporting uh, public education. But anyway, with that said, uh, if you would please, I ask that all of you go in support of the compensation package that is being brought forth to you this evening. Thank you. Um, I forgot to mention this, but we do normally have student recognition, but we, we do have one, uh, I think, important staff recognition for today. I wish we had a larger audience, but uh, I do want to recognize, on behalf of the school district, uh, Dr. Greg Gibson. Uh, for those of you that do not know, he was recently named as Superintendent of the Year for Reason 20, uh, so we definitely appreciate his efforts in, in leading the school district, so congratulations. set high standards in this district, so nothing short of Superintendent of the Year for the state. This is what we expect, so uh, hopefully here in a couple months we'll be able to make that announcement, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, congratulations. All right, at this time we'll go on to the public forum, the district facility needs. Um, Dr. Gibson. Yeah, tonight, uh, I'm going to turn it quickly over to Mr. Prusky, and we also have the, the Westerman Gang, as we like to refer to them, uh, with us, our financial advisors, to kind of wrap up this presentation. This is not an action item tonight. This is uh, strictly to um, maybe put a bow around some of the pre-work that has been done, maybe one way to look at it with our community advisory committee, and just bring most of the trustees I appreciate the fact that you've attended community advisory committee meetings and there's probably not any new information tonight, but we wanted to make sure that publicly we kind of gave a status report of where we are with respect to the bond. Uh, everything's moving forward as planned. Our community advisory committee continues to advise us and help us make the documents better and make our presentations better, and we will continue to do that. But again, tonight is purely informational. Wayne will run through some items, and then the Westerners will talk uh, briefly about uh, Basically, can we afford it? That's what our financial advisors do, and they'll lay out a little information related to the payout piece, and then we'll um, bring some items back to the board in August. Is that right? I don't think we have anything for July. Be August. August. So, be August. We'll come back to the board in August. Mr. Bruce. Thank you. Good evening. As we're loading, I meant to hit that earlier. Uh, this evening, as Dr. Gibson alluded to, there's, there's uh, to encapsulate it all, there's four parts to this. Um, first part would, uh, is a quick review of our demographers update. It's a, a new first quarter report. Okay, so as that's working, uh, a demographer update along with our then tail dovetailing into our 10 year facility master plan. Uh, and then along with the proposition to come before you later on in August, later in the year, about the bond of 2016. And then we'll have the, 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 much, the questions come forward to talk about the financial aspect of that side of it. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first off, there's going to the first quarter demographer report. These are made, these are posted on our website under the IS at the Facility Planning and Development, and you'll see them there as number one on the graphic reports. And I wanted to not go through all 44 slides, but I wanted to highlight a few a few items here. So basically going down through to slide six. Uh, the interest rate is holding steady around the 4%, uh, which is driving a lot of housing activity. And where we are as a district, you can 
SCUC out of the, from the 2011 to 2015, we ranked third out of 31 districts, so approximately 3,500 closest. So we're still growing. Our quarterly new home construction has seen a spike. Uh, it's the highest first quarter closing since 2010, the 238, the red line here. So closings above the starts. So we're, we're moving right along there. And again, we're third in the area with uh, new home construction. North side and Comal ahead of us. An interesting slide here for the district. And again, stop me if you need to go. If I need to go over anything, but I'm just kind of glazing over some of the high points on the on the executive summary side. Uh, there's been a change year over year change in the city of Shirts. We've seen an increase of 77 <coughs> percent, but we're still seeing the closing 43 percent in Cibolo, 34 in Shirts. But annual closings. Shirts and Selma climbed about 80% over the past 12 months. A quick look at the, the new home subdivisions. You can see their their names, elementary attendance in their city, and then the projected build out. Uh, Riata still going. We can see then also Saratoga coming on board 2021, cross line all the way out to 2040, down there by Corbett. So again, Crossline and Saratoga moving up on the, for the first time on the top performer list. And then the note there from our demographer to watch the Rhine Valley on the list for later. Uh, moving right along, and this is a snapshot of 30% of our new homes in the Cibolo Valley Elementary Zone. But look down right below Cibolo Valley, you'll see Rose Garden is coming on as well. A lot of that being the area down <coughs> south along the 1518 near uh, Corbett Junior High. Green Valley also seeing some movement due to Saratoga. And I think what we're seeing is, is a, what we've seen in the past. We're continuing to grow as a district uh, by elementary, by junior high. And then our median home price increases to a new high of 258, 287, with the breakdown there by the cities. Cibolo at 264, Shirts at 276, Selma 176, and Converse at 225. So housing is, we're increasing in housing and the price is going up as well. So then we have the vacant lots and the, the new lots being delivered. Um, this is a, a new lots under development. With this slide, 159 are in Cibolo, but now we're seeing 401 are in Shirts. Uh, Rose Garden, you see the commonality here of Wilder, Wilder, Wilder. So we're seeing some growth in areas that we're gonna have to be ready for. Also, planned future, I uh, wanted to draw some attention to this item, the planned future apartment units. You can see here on the far right, we're looking at about 569 in these attendance zones. And the note there from our demographer that we have the potential to see several future apartment complexes. Just recently, Monday, uh, received a report from Bear County. Uh, also, they are experiencing a boom in this avenue as well. So not just housing, but also now in the planned future uh, apartment units. And when a unit that means an apartment. Yes, sir. One, one of the apartments. So right now, active in the area for proposed apartment developments, you can see these four, Avanti Canyon, Payton Point, Preserve at Wiederstein, and Silverton. Uh, the Avanti Canyon and the Dobie Steel, Payton Point, Corbett Clemens, Preserve, Corbett Clemens, and Silverton and the Dobie Steel. Uh, the asterisk showing that it's applied uh, <coughs> for the tax credit, credit from the Texas housing <coughs> So where are these locations at? Silverton, across from Steel High School, Avanti Canyon, up near 35, and uh, <coughs> I'm drawing the blank here. Uh, Bussies and above our third high school site. This is Cibolo Valley Drive, Weirstein and Old Weirstein. They're simple. The preserve at Weirstein along 3009 and Weirstein Road uh, by the car wash there. 
before you get up to the AutoZone and Bush's Chicken and HEB, and then the Payton Point across from Amazon. So these are the four locations for those that are actively pursuing uh, permits from the city. Going forward then, I'm to go through what we've all seen, houses going up in new land, or in land and resulting in housing, but just as a reminder, <coughs> The new home occupancy forecast, in red you'll see the multifamily units and in blue the single family closing. So uh, in the next three to four years, still seeing upwards above 700. And then in 2020, you can see it, it what I would call dropped to 678, but it's, we need to be aware that the Gilbert Track, the huge land behind Steel High School and Bison Ridge, and other areas may be coming online at that time. So this number may stay straight across at 800 or it may even increase. Those lots have not been put into this, this projection. And why is that? They have not been fully approved through their, their respective cities. They're just talking. They're playing, trying to figure out how to get what they can there. We monitor them, but until they are officially planted, we don't count them. Right. And then you see our district numbers here. Uh, we're averaging 0.78, so almost 8.8 .8 kids per new home, and then an average of 0.3 per most family. So, first apartment complex projected to open in, in the 2017 timeframe. So, what does this mean for our enrollment forecast? We're still on the very upward <coughs> trend. Uh, you can see the, the growth of our, of our district with approximately 20,000 students by 2020. That was real brief and real high level. Any, any questions? I know I kind of breeze through that. I didn't go very detailed. Any questions from board members? So, okay, moving further along then. With that, okay, so here's the information, and then how does that impact SCUC? Well, as many of you have seen this item before, the, the, the 10 year facility master plan. What we've been investigating and looking across the projects down the left and the year across to, to, to the right, we're currently at this, this green level here, which is coming up to the November time frame. And that would be uh, what we're talking about, the proposed November of 2016 bond program. On this sheet here, on this 10-year this plan, it, with the gray 16 bond, these are the items that we're looking at for that bond program. One being, if you recall, Civil Valley, yes, it has a lot of growth going on around there, but that's we just built that school, that one's there, and we can accommodate for a while. The Rose Garden area is in need of the help, and that is why the Rose Garden replacement is, is shown there. Uh, if you recall, the board approved uh, the district moving forward with planning for the design for the Rose Garden replacement down on the site at 1518 near Corbett at 1518 and close to the Schaefer Road intersection. And that design has begun. Uh, programming has started and looking at uh, site development issues. So with this, we feel that the, using the prototype, just diving into this real quick, we can squeeze this actually into the 2018 opening time frame. We feel. Now, right now it's in the planning stages, so we haven't, we haven't adjusted that, that, frame, that time frame there. Intermediate, junior high, and high school, as far as for new programming, nothing until the 2020 time frame about the junior high planning. Uh, but the renovations in addition, we're looking at Clemens. And you can see what we're looking at a time frame there for uh, renovation to <coughs> Clemens High School. And I'll go into more detail on that here in a little bit. Uh, and then having the bond contingency. Also then, along with that growth, the increased need for uh, technology infrastructure within our district as well as on all of our campuses. Uh, not really worrying about on the next one on the land. We are concerned, we are continually looking, but we still have some availability of funds from the 2013. So we think by that time we're okay for that first frame there from 2016 to 19. It may come back up into the 2019 time. And then again on transportation with buses, 
and then HVAC replacement for various campuses, three to be a matter of fact across the district. So I think we're familiar with this document here with the, the demographic information, the student projections along the bottom by year, and again by 2025, our 20,000 number. So with that being said, uh, I'd like to bring up, well, I'm going to the next piece, and then I'll let you close it. Okay, Tyler. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So, um, So as the overview, kind of what we just talked about with, we have a Rose Garden replacement. We're looking at a Clemens High School renovation, the contingency, HVAC projects at three campuses, technology and transportation. Uh, going into the bond facts, this is a, a obvious draft form, uh, but having this on there with our projected student growth as we've done in the past showing here, the project shown with the capacity guidelines and the current or the current capacity and enrollment at those campuses. Uh, move. Again, the estimated cost to taxpayer the way that we are proposing this at this time is to stick to 45 cent per 100 valuation. And it's important to note, and this is through early feedback as well as uh, most recent feedback, that while the proposed at this point, proposed INS tax rate is not to go up. Taxes may go up if your valuation goes up, and with that goes, you're still going to pay. So it's our, we are not proposing a change in the INS tax rate. So in order to follow along with that piece of feedback that came through. So in the explanatory notes, I think we've heard this as well, but with Rose Garden, if you just bear with me here, the Rose Garden replacement, with the addition of Cibolo Valley, we're looking at bringing on Rose Garden replacement at that site using the Cibolo Valley prototype. Uh, pretty much cookie cutter, with maybe a few changes in there to give it its own feel of its own campus. Project cost at this time is estimated at about 38 million in project. Uh, renovation and expansion of Clemens to prepare Clemens to accommodate up to 3,300 students. We are, we are looking at this very carefully because as you saw in 2025, we're over 20,000 and that's kind of the time frame of the third high school. So in, late, in simple terms, we don't want to build a box to hold 3,300. We want to be able to, when we break off, not have it, parts of an empty box, so to speak. So we're looking at the design very carefully on this through the programming and seeing what we can do to help alleviate and to assist us in that matter in the long term for the district as well. To increase capacity and to create education standards and add additional wing classrooms, career tech learning spaces, and then additional program spaces for campus programs. So those are the two big items uh, coming that we are currently working on. Having a $10 million bond contingency, and then again, feedback from this point is it is for, it's for the bond contingency. Anything can happen in construction, the, especially when you're doing renovation and expansion. And this is not only aimed for renovation and expansion, but any of those items in the bond. It could include anything that may happen with the HVAC replacement as shown there with Wilder, Jordan, and Watts. Uh, just to give you some background, since I mentioned that, on the HVAC, we're looking at re total replacement of those systems at Wilder and Jordan. Well, that's a two summer project. We can't do it all in one summer. So, and those units are up in the mezzanines. You have to go <coughs> tear out ceilings, bring out half, fix them, come back the next summer. So those campuses will be impacted two summers in a row. And then Watts Elementary in the last year. Uh, we have some planning schedules. I can go through that as well. Technology, planning on the technology improvements to district server and storage capacities and then also increased bandwidth for the digital learning environment and district operations. And then again, because of the growth, additional buses will be needed to accommodate our student growth, special populations, as well as inventory replacement, and with our extracurricular activities as they go forward. So 
that was a quick run through on the bond facts there. I didn't entertain any questions that you may have here. Well, yeah, I was going to ask how much, how many, what's the capacity of steel? Driven. I mean, this is basically driven by the committee that's been taking a look at this, correct? Yes, the combined community advisory and community advisory has seen this. Uh, those, and they've provided feedback, which has been actionable on this as well. So, yes. is this, those, those meetings are all open to the public as well? Yes. Sir. yes sir. Um, if anyone else wants to show up and provide feedback, I assume we... July 13th is our next one in here. Yeah. Um, open for questions, comments, uh -huh. feedback. Yeah, I was going to say, I've been to a few and they're it's very informative, very good. They listen, give feedback, it's awesome. Um, if you get negative, or what's the worst criticism so far? Uh, if any. Hmm. The worst? I can't. I think everybody has a tendency, as do I, to look at what your children are in and not the entire ISD and why can't we have more money for where my child is. Occasionally, we get that. Yes. Yeah, so, so, for example, I can look at this and say that there's nothing on here for Steel High School. So, if my kids go to Steel High School, I'm upset. And, possibly, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of trying to think of out there in public what's what's the criticism. I'm just trying to think ahead of time. I think, if I may, the one that comes to mind is why are we do why why are we planning and why are we investigating what we're doing in Clemens and we can just go build a new one. And then it's the, it's the educational aspect of that. We're talking about upwards of over 150 million to build an equivalent campus that will house up to 3,300. Here we have a good campus that uh, architectural and engineering firms have said the bones are good. Get in there, bring it up to to standards. Um, and then once we go down that road, that that's been smoothed over, so to speak. But uh, you know think, what? That, that's a probably a good one to give as an example. The, the other component to that is, you know, we talk in terms of taking Clemens up to 3,300. You know, and what, no matter what that number is, when we split to the third one, there sits Clemens with whatever we have done or not done. Right. And then you go to the third one and you haven't upgraded CTE and you haven't upgraded fine arts yet, and it's just, then it's your 10 more years behind the eight ball. So I, I would add that to what you're talking about. Something's going to Something's going to have to be done to a third. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was, uh, historically, for the new board members, you know, once upon a time, not too long ago, we had this unofficial rule that none of our high schools were going to be any bigger than 1,500 kids, believe it or not. Um, no, we used to have a rule that no, our elementary weren't going to be bigger than 50, uh, 550. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, we have now 1,100. So just to make sure we understand, you know, and I can see the members of the public starting to think our high schools are getting a little bit too large. Um, but when you look at our competing districts, I mean, our high schools are still relatively small compared to other other high schools here in the San Antonio area. So just to make sure we certainly inform the public of that. And, um, so we're looking at basically getting both high schools somewhere around the low 3,000s before we actually build a new high school. Right? Yes, sir. Which again, historically may seem fairly large for this area, but in comparison to other high schools around the state, it's just not that big. So it basically boils down to the dollars and cents. I mean, you just can't not afford nowadays to have 1,500 kid high schools. Now with the operational costs and other programs and everything else that's involved. Did we just recently do a survey for Clemens as to kind of need? <coughs> we, did, we did a feasibility assessment on the building itself, uh, along with components and program spaces and everything to that nature. And that's what we're investigating now through program meetings with district directors and staff about what the future needs are for that campus. And that's something that the advisory committee will take a look at. Oh yes, coming up with this. They've seen parts of it already, and as, and as it all goes, as it develops, we'll share as well. It's not nothing secret. I mean, we're going to show what we got. Yeah, just think ahead. I assume we're going to look at just doing this as one, one complete bond package, and not as pieces. I mean, it's, it's all or At this time, yes, sir. That's what I have. That's what the district. I mean, we're proposing one proposition. Well, you know, a couple questions. Yes, sir. Um, the, the bond issue that we're finishing up right now, how much was that? 
$92 million. And of that $92 million, how many, how much more capacity would we build in, in for students? So the steel got I mean, added on, how much capacity did we add to that? That was, uh, that, that took it from the 15, the original 15. Doesn't have to be exact, just so roughly eight to 900 students. About 900 students, okay. Uh, Wilder? That wasn't on the bond issue though, right? No, Wilder was a fun okay. count. Doby? General operating. Uh, Doby, we're taking Doby to 1,400 from, I think it was, right here, like a thousand or something. I think it was less than a thousand for design. I think we're under we're under nine hundred. So about four hundred, five hundred, another four five hundred kids. Yes. Okay. And then Civil Valley. Civil Valley was is a nine ninety to twelve hundred. Well, no, there wasn't any kids there. No. So twelve hundred. That's my point. We added. I'm just trying to figure out for ninety two million dollars we added how much capacity for kids and seats. Okay. So uh, you know I'm roughly looking at you know maybe twenty five hundred. Students is what we kind of added for ninety-four million dollars. You know what I'm saying? So, but it wasn't just. It was it, there was also the other projects. No, I understand. That. I understand. I'm just looking at the big, big picture. Gotcha. For ninety-four, for ninety-two million dollars, we asked our community. We added X amount of that ninety-two million dollars. We added so much for students, for the growth of students. Okay. Now, of course, we had other stuff, the buses and all stuff. That's all capacity. I get it. Okay. For one hundred thirty-seven million dollars, we're adding. How much? Well, you're adding. It, you're adding. We're taking Clemens. You're taking Clemens up a thousand students. Eleven hundred. Okay. So there's eleven 1, okay. hundred. And Rose there. Garden is currently four eighty, and it'll be nine ninety. Okay. So another five hundred. Okay. And that's it. Those are the two campuses. Yes. Okay. So for one hundred thirty-seven million dollars, uh, we're telling our community that we're only going to add sixteen hundred. You know, we can add capacity for 1,600 more students. Well, you're looking, if you also look at it too, we can add more capacity on the Clemens campus just like we can at Steel. Steel's design capacity is 2,400. Well, I'm just looking at the whole I'm back. just kind of looking at how people talk to me, you know, and say, okay, um, we're, we, you're asking for so much money, how many schools are you building? Well, you know, and I think like, it isn't, that isn't the big picture. Right, and I think another, another aspect of that, Mr. Wilson, is the steel wing with general classrooms, we didn't touch special areas like an auditorium. We did add, I would say, an athletic space, so that was one special space, but then we added most of the classrooms in the ROTC part below that. There wasn't a lot of touching. This, with the Clemens part, we're talking on this one, is bringing it up to standards that haven't been changed for decades. But I'm, I'm not being critical of you know, what the choices are. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm also a, providing some information on that. CT, when we address the CTE and the auditorium this year at Clemens, those dollars go up. So, I mean, it's 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 kind of hard to do an apples to apples on, on, on what you were doing, but right. I see where you're going with it. Yeah, I, I'm just telling you that the people that I've talked to on this is, um, you know, it's 2016. According to what we were putting out as our projection and stuff, we won't see another real big in influence in seats for children until 2013 or 2023 so seven years from now you'll see um, the other elementary schools the middle school, middle elementary school coming online you'll see the uh, junior high coming online in 2023 you know that's you know what I'm saying in seven more years before we probably see um, a lot of money being spent on getting kids in seats right okay I'm just it's just a perception is what it is. And I realize people don't realize, hey, we have to have buses too to get kids there. You know, and there's other things we have to do. But I was just curious as to, to look at the numbers. It's forty more it's forty more million dollars for not as many kids spaces and seats. That's I guess is what I was looking at. Which the renovation of Clemens is the difference there. I, I understand. I do. I, I, just have to, I have to sell this. <laughs> You know, I have to sell this to people and then let them understand that it, there's a bigger picture here. So. Well, and I don't have an exact number to give you, but the CTE in the auditorium space really is in need of some addressing. And those are your higher dollar areas. Yeah, absolutely. That's what, absolutely. Back to us. The, the, last, the last comment is um, currently to date, and I'm sure it's in an update somewhere along the lines here, um, the, um, oh gosh, what's it going to be? 
contingency fee. I've been on that for a long time now, say, how much have we spent on the contingency fee? How much have we spent? And it keeps showing that we haven't spent much of it from this last bond. I mean, that's, that's, that's frugal business. I get that. Okay. Um, what's going to happen to that, number one? Because that's not something we tell the, 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 sh the stakeholders. When you do this bond issue, um, we, get, we specifically tell everybody what happens. Okay. Because the law tells us we have to tell them specifically what they're, they're voting for. But that contingency fee is something that people could come in back to me going, that's just a slush fund. And I'm like, no, it's not. You don't understand. You know, so I think there's a lot of people out there still looking at, you know, how much, where's the contingency fee at the, from the last bond, and what are you doing with that money? If, uh, this is from the 2013 bond facts that I have up there now. I'm under with that on your question. Any remaining contingency dollars? Mm -hmm will be used for projects other than new construction. So basically what is on the 2013, so transportation, technology, infrastructure, HVAC, future land purchase. And then if you recall, we also, we moved forward and used some of that contingency already for the elementary safety, the best field. Right. So basically what we told uh, our community and our contract with them was it was not gonna be a special fund for special projects outside of what we're doing here for facility needs and capacity needs and anything else other than you know and then add on to that transportation if we want to use the remaining contingency for buses well we can do that because that's what we, that's how we did it uh, back in 2013. does that answer yeah it, 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 yes it does i'm just want to put it out there that it's a concern to the community okay. is uh that and then bond savings and interest well, it's always a it's always a contentious point to people that, that visit with me about the about that because in the past they've seen that money used for things that they voted no for in bond issues. Okay, so it's just a contentious point uh, when people are talking about bonds. I understand the process coming forward. Uh, just to let you know, is as we close these projects out, and we just met on this today. Uh, bond accountants as we close these projects out is to show the, the I'll call it the, the trail or the track of those dollars. Cibolo Valley savings of X amount of dollars here's what's available to go into contingency and then share with the board where those dollars are going. They're going but those savings dollars are going here with the, with the guidance and then boom we put it into contingency and then anything that comes out of there the, the process is to come before this this committee this bond I mean this board and Explain our rationale as to why. We in the monthly financials is the tracking of the bond dollars. It's so in there every month with the board review. And any community member that's saying what you're saying, Mr. Wilson, on that second last part is just misinformed. And yes. I would recommend strongly that they join the community advisory committee if they want to be informed and not misinformed. Uh, right. you know, no, I, I agree. I would say that the only contingency money, if, if we even use contingency money, that we've used for something that was voted down on a prior bond issue was to renovate the, the press box at our district football stadium and soccer stadium and the hand practice facility. I mean, because I mean, people use it, you know. Um, and that was a safety issue and it was also an ADA compliance issue. That if we did not get in compliance with ADA, we were going to be taken to the cleaners and it would have cost us a lot more money well that's what i'm saying it, it was it, well again it's just that would be the only thing that the contingency money would have been used for it, to my knowledge if we used it we use general so you know it's general operating use anyway what i was going to what my, my point what i was going to get to before i got off the brain so anyway uh so you know the original plans for Steel High School. The wing that we added on recently was in the original plans for Steel High School. And uh, for whatever reason, the city board at that time decided to take that off. Uh, they put in some lockers, they took off the wing. And eventually that wing, what we, I don't know how much we spent on that wing, you know, built that wing this year, but uh, it, it would have been a lot cheaper to do it back in 2003, 2004, 2005. So. You know, the thing about it is, I think it's it's best to look forward, not look back. You know, I think that, that this school district, this uh, 
uh, administration. I'm not talking about the school board, but I'm talking about the administration. Has done a pretty good job of effectively utilizing and maintaining and overseeing bond money. And we, we've been able to buy back some bonds and pay off some things and do some things without funds. Uh, they have kept at 45 cents where it is. And, uh, we, you know, we've got kids coming here. There's nothing, you know, we can't build a wall. We can't do that, you know. Um, and, uh, and that here. <laughs> we can't do that. They're going to go. I mean, and they do this out. Because we have, we have a little <laughs> Further questions or comments? Okay. okay, so then continuing on on, on this uh, report, then I'd like to introduce Mr. Westerman. Come on up.
What was the what's the projection? <coughs> you know, what was David kind of mentioned this. We're good or bad. We're a victim of our own success. I mean, this district has become very very successful as a result. People want to move here, which causes overcrowding, which causes more issues. It's just a rolling thing there. But um, if my stand in the state really does not help us to any significant extent when it comes to facilities. The existing bed allotment, which was established in 2007, I believe, was pretty robustly funded at that time, but it hasn't been funded that way since then. In fact, we plugged in the numbers just playing around with the Fast Road School Coalition. If, if they funded it today the way the wage took to the total, that they funded it in year one, our INS tax rate and SCUC would be 13 cents lower. So our 45 cents would be 13 cents lower. Yeah. So to answer your question, no, they really haven't helped us. We're arguing that you have, you know, we do a lot of recruiting in this state for businesses from out of state to move here. We sit in the news all the time. And so our state gets about 80,000 new students a year as a result of that outcome. And 80 school districts take on those 80,000 new students. It doesn't spread out geographically. Like if you can move 40,000 of them to Fort Stockton, yeah. lots would be grand because you know, that, there's no one out there. So I live in Fort Stockton, that's why I'm saying. So it's coming right here on I-35 and I-45 and in some of the areas in the middle place. So you know, that's what we're saying. You're behind on existing debt a lot of the state. You're behind on what you're supposed to provide and funding. I'm sorry. I don't know, you mentioned state first. I well, when they we yeah. they introduced that project in the IFA that for uh, schools, uh, the funding for them was phenomenal. And that they were the project. If those uh, two items were important then, <coughs> more important now. The, the capacity, you're right, in which they fund them is so much below what it was comparably when they first initiated those projects. So it shifted to the local tax credit. Yeah, I forget the percentage, but I mean, as a district, we're residential heavy. I think we say that all the time here. I mean, we don't have a whole lot of commercial properties. No sign of any nuclear plant coming in the town Both cities participate on our community advisory committee, so we monitor that closely. And there is commercial property coming in. It's just the end ratio to the total. There's so many students coming in that we're, we're actually losing ground in ratio to the total, even though more commercial property gets coming. 10 Amazon that. And, and again, the more successful we are, the more people want to move here. So we don't really have a whole lot of control over commercial versus residential or how many people do or don't move here. No, we have a strategic uh, challenge that the zoning, which was established 60 years ago, the school zone, not the city zoning, but the school district boundaries, let me say it that way. Um, you know, at that time, I don't think people knew where, you know, I 35, you know, exactly. You know, we're, we're a commercial hotspot we're going to be. And one of our greatest strategic challenges, in my opinion, is that most of the prime commercial property in the city of Shirts that is left is in Cornell ISD. That's bad. And we can not like that. All we want to not like that, but that's just a fact. And so we'll be dealing with that from now on. <coughs> Any other questions? Uh, one question. Um, far down the road, the toll road comes, do we get part of that? Is that taxable or how does it work for us? No, what, what it may, the, not, the, the, not the actual toll, but what it may generate is a corridor of commercial that wasn't necessarily you know, projected to accelerate some of that and basically open up some potential commercial alimony and accelerate that. If Hagerville or some road would have been that way eventually, but this would accelerate that. One of the problems, the toll roads, I don't know what I'm going to but they don't drop off really as often as a normal highway if you go. And that's the point. You pay to get on and you stay on. And so there's always a debate about it doesn't increase the commercial. I mean, the people that own it right now are arguing that it does increase it just as much. But you usually have to go further up than you might normally and get off and then come back you know, on access roads because the purpose of the toll road is to get you on and get you somewhere else and not get off. The, the, uh, the last bond election, I think, was in May. It was in May, right? I mean, not this past May, but in 2013. 2013 in May. So how does that, do we do anything differently since it's in November? Presumably, 
higher, higher turnout, you know, is that right? Are we going to have to do anything differently? So it'll just be people that vote will have to look further down a long list of things. It'll just be a longer list. But we'll have our own place wherever you're voting. If you're in the district, if you're in that city or this city or that county, this county, you'll just keep that with look, look, look. That's a good point. I, if I recall, I mean, you may have to actually get a separate ballot. You can go to a different booth. I know they do that sometimes. Uh, electronic was the last time. My observation was that you just have to keep you to stay with them. You just have to keep going and going and going and then down, find out your page to the 40 and, and you get to the school of Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any further questions? All right. So is that in the public part? Okay. So I guess at this time, if there's any members of the public that have any comments or have any questions or need further information or want to do something for then I'll be the time to do it. So. Once, twice. No one's looking at me. Uh, Irene, Dr. Uh, Trisky. I've been actively involved with bonds in our community. Pretty much since I moved here back in 1987, anything to help promote our school district and boy have we grown since we moved here in 87. Um, some of the things that were brought up today, um, Mr. Wilson, but you said uh, being a member of the Community Advisory Committee, uh, some of the comments that have come in that I've also heard from the community has been why don't we just level Clemens and build a new, I know, I know, um, New York because they said um, Clements is a patchwork high school. We're just patching and patching. The other strong point keeps coming up about equity, and that's what rolls into let's flatten it out and rebuild it <coughs> so we're equitable to the other high school and other uh, the third high school that would be coming up in the future. Um, Yes, Mr. Kuski did make a valid point about that. Some of these areas are just not adding a wing. You know, there's concern about parking. There's concern about the, the auditorium. That auditorium with theater arts department, they don't have classrooms. They use that auditorium. All kinds of programs, even the band doesn't get to use the auditorium as often as they would like to use. Uh, as far as putting money into a proposition that did not pass uh, back in um, 2006, which was a stadium. We had to do the press box. We were not in compliance for years under ADA, that elevator. And it coincided with the windstorm that damaged the press box. You couldn't patch that up. That, that's another patchwork, again. So what was done to the stadium was done because it was way overdue. Uh, and again, we needed to be in compliance, ADA. Um, actually, when we looked at, the, as a committee, when we looked at 137 million in the breakdown, there had even, even been talk about the 72 million be higher in order to what's possibly going to be found at Clemens High School, just like there had been issues with Dobie and the renovation, because they were very similar in the years. And um, to his credit, Mr. Prusky has done a wonderful job. <laughs> Dobie has had surprises before in the past. You know, I remember driving to work one time, and then when I got to my office, my secretary called me in and said, your husband just called you said that there was a fire at the school. That was at Dobie, an electrical fire. He's okay. I didn't know where he was. The students had been farmed out to a different location. But we're looking at, you know, he remembers that fire well. And he said, you know, it's going to be amazing to see what may be found at Clemens. And, you know, again, we've been residents here. We both live here. My husband does work here. Um, the kind of things, issues that well arise. And so that 10 million contingency, yes, it um, spread over the various projects that are being proposed, but at the same time, 
just looking to see what has transpired with Dobie. And Clemens will be finding itself with that issue. Uh, another point to bring up, going back to the stadium, uh, the band uses the pavement, the parking lot pavement, to practice. So even then, because you know, the stadium's using it, and coaches use it, and so forth and everything. So even with that, they're very limited. The dance team, they don't have a studio. Like, what's that studio? ROTC, they, you know, again, equity, equity, equity is what keeps coming up. And that's why at this end, instead of patchwork, that's why the idea of leveling it, building it brand new to make it equitable has come up. But, um, it's gotten to the point, bonds are a fact of life in our community. Uh, it's grown substantially. Portables, they're not going to leave us anytime soon. I mean, I, I just see decades of portables. Unless we find, come into the 21st century and do virtual, you know, teaching or, or whatever. But um, it's thought out uh, carefully. We have been involved. Something that I would like to bring your attention is um, the committee, in particular Maggie Titterington, the Church Chamber of Commerce president. She did bring up at our CAC meeting, she wanted to make sure that the teachers had input as far as um, you know what's going to happen at their facilities. Rose Garden, I hear it's about time that we get something. And I remember back in 2006, I pushed and pushed and pushed during that bond to get a replacement for them, just like Shirts and Wiederstein and Corbett got replacements. Well, we do need to move forward to that. Everybody's, you know, plus on that one. Um, but Clements, you know, it does need help. It, it's way overdue for help also. Um, we patched it up as much as can, and some of you, you your, your homeboys, you know, homegirls from this area. We do our best, and uh, as a member of the community, I support um, the teachers at Clemens High School, the staff at Clemens High School did participate in the month of May on a survey. So it's just not administrative, whatever they thought out. Mr. Prusky did address the staff afterwards the staff did participate in a comprehensive survey, so if that information is provided to the board and to the CAC, that would be helpful. Because just like in 2006, and I did bring that up, when we did the comprehensive surveys with the staff members, that provided valid documentation that we, in fact, needed replacement schools for shirts for Corbett for Wiederstein and also for Rose Garden, but that one did not make the, the bond package at that time. So if you read those, maybe they will enlighten us to other issues that are happening at Clements. Thank you for your time. That's it, uh, Anyone else? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next item on the agenda is report on board advocacy. Uh, just a review of uh, monthly board member participation. Uh, anything you want to share with us, Mr. Crow? Mark? Okay. <laughs> we go to the, um, had the opportunity to go to the Northeast Partnership. Uh, learned a little something there. CPS is going to be essentially wireless. I don't think wireless collecting is going meter reading. That's sort of interesting. I don't know how it's going to fit in with our district. I did uh, also went to SLI this past weekend, right? And two things I would like to mention with uh, Dr. Gibson and Gary and later down the road was Alamo Heights does have a uh, sort of an exit interview with their seniors. They pick every 13th student and they bring them into the auditorium essentially and they sit them before the board and the board essentially gets asked, the, the board gets asked all of the graduating seniors questions about exit interviews and sort of you know, it sort of flows and you find out a lot of information. And so I don't know how it said it was really valuable. I talked to Dr. Gibson and Gary Allen about that one. The second one was they do have a bullying fact finding commission and I don't know how it's I guess due to the suicide, uh, I guess about a year or two ago. So I'm gonna ask Dr. Gibson to sort of 
whenever that report comes out, make sure we're informed about it. Obviously, you might have some uh, some information we could use in case something ever happens in this district. Uh, but I got to meet a lot of people, learned a lot. Got to see Dr. Uh, Gary Ender present, so that was a highlight of my whole, whole weekend. That's it. Thanks, Ron. Um, we're talking about May or June. Whatever you want to talk about that. I, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's May. Well, we're talking about May, then I, you know, I did my usual talk about it. Um, and uh, I think that's about it. And uh, of course, in you know, June, we had have, we have, uh, graduations. Two in one night. Uh, one was kind of a flyby, flyover, and I appreciated uh, uh, Mr. Westbrook and, and uh, Mr. Ipac, uh staying behind at, at, uh, at the Allison Steel graduation and handing out those diplomas. We had to rush over to the uh, Byron Steel Steele graduation at Brickman uh, Coliseum, and then, of course, we had Clemens uh, the next night. All three graduations were one, and uh, attended a, um, a education foundation uh, meeting uh, early June. And uh, we definitely need more members of the uh, foundation board, and folks who can participate and stay with it. Uh, it is a great source of uh, funding and support for our classroom teachers in the school district. And uh, we basically have about eight people. Uh, who are running everything, doing everything, and, and doing the, the my share of getting everything done, and, 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 you know, getting the 34, 35 million dollars a year, uh, not me, I'm not saying 35 thousand dollars a year. Uh, we're not giving it to you. And, uh, yeah, some of them were taking vacations. But, uh, anyway, uh, and then uh, I was also at SLI, very glad to say I did not see Gary in his presentation. And uh, I did see some wonderful presentations at, a, at a good, good meetings and, and enjoyed it. So thank you very much. Chair? Sure. That was my first SLI. And I was glad to have gone. It was very informative and I had a better understanding of how well things run here compared to what others, others complained about in their school district. So that was pleasant surprise. We uh, also have been to both chamber events this month and last month. Maggie does a good job of introducing me as a school board member every time we have an opening of a new business and so far it's been very good. I haven't had to, to uh, duck under the aisles. And at the SLI one of the presenters talked about how she would get behind her car in Walmart so that she wouldn't have to answer questions. I have not, se I have not seen that in my tenure yet. There. Yeah, I was also at the Leadership Institute. We keep saying SLI, so I don't know what that is. Um, was some, some great trainings. I also had a meeting for the Legislative Action uh, Committee that I was on, <coughs> um, TASB, and discuss more agenda items that they're going to walk bar with our our legislative bar um, when the new session begins and i also went to a breakout session on just as a school district how we can we already talked to our representatives but it was really good to hear what other people are doing as well so just encourage everyone if they have issues to contact their sorry contact our representatives because that's when the things are going to change <laughs> Um, I'll just give a quick kudos to our athletic department and our coaches. Um, you know, I'm a school in this area, and we didn't have what's called summer camps in the summertime, summertime. But um, all of our athletic programs, soccer, basketball, football, baseball, you name it, tennis, they all have summer camps. Basically, they're lasting about four to five days, about a week period of time. And um, rolled my son in the steel basketball camp. There must have been two, 300 kids over there all excited about playing basketball. It gives them a chance to actually Show up on a high school campus, show, play in the high school gym, which is probably a big deal if you're six years old. Um, a, lot of, a lot of student athletes go over there practicing and working and helping the kids. And, uh, I know it just gets them excited about the whole program, about the whole district, and 
uh, no doubt probably provides you know, better athletic programs moving forward as well. So just, um, what I know, the coaches don't get paid for that. I think they just, whatever dollars they raise, they keep it for their own slush fund to help buy equipment during the year. So just kudos to the coaches that put those uh, programs on during the summertime. All right, we'll move ahead. Uh, again, we got a lot, of, a lot of items on the agenda tonight. Uh, for new business reports, uh, June 2016 construction update, update uh, Mr. Bruce. Uh, 
this one on to the right over here. <laughs> Uh, okay. The new one's off to the right. The existing ones are off to the left. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Right, next up, we have local policy yeah. update. Uh, the local, pol local policy of DNA and DNB. Uh, Ms. Cannon? Mm -hmm. Yes, good evening. President Emmett, Dr. Gibson, members of the board. Just wanted to bring to your attention a policy update that we'll be bringing to you later this um, summer. Due to the commissioner recommended evaluation, it's been changing for the 2016-17 school year uh, for teachers and campus administrators. It will require us to change policies DNA and DMV, DMV legal and local. Uh, these revisions are expected to come to us by the end of June in update 105. However, we're going to need to um, Approve those policies or adopt those policies prior to August 10th so that we can be in compliance when the teachers come back and we train them on the new evaluation system um, in this fall. And um, what you need to hear me out is a draft of an admin reg for both policy DNA and DNB that will help guide us on the process itself for the evaluations for next year. This go by test me review as well? The admin reg does not go by having all they made a recommendation to us. Any questions? Yeah, this will be on the agenda for action on the next meeting. Just the report time. Okay. Okay, next one. Uh, next item we have a resolution regarding hazardous bus riding. Uh, good evening, uh, President Gibbon, uh, Dr. Gibson, and members of the board. Uh, this is a, a discussion item that will be brought uh, for action in our next uh, board meeting. Uh, it is regarding the CNA local policy for uh, student transportation. Uh, students that reside within two miles of the school uh, campus are not eligible to receive transportation services uh, unless they encounter hazardous areas on the route to school. Uh, once a year, we must adopt a resolution identifying those conditions and areas within the district. Uh, compliance with this policy ensures that we receive uh, proper state funding uh, and of course consistency with our service offerings. The resolution once approved will be posted on the transportation website. Uh, there are no major changes to the, uh, uh, to the areas uh, from the previous uh, year. So no changes, has anything been taken off the hazardous list? Mm -hmm. No. Who, who decides that these are hazardous routes? Is that just discre your discretion or who? Yeah, well, well we go by what the, uh, the actual criteria uh, you actually see on the resolution. Uh, a, a condition where uh, no walkways provided and children must walk along any uh, or cross the freeway or expressway, an underpass, uh, an overpass or bridge, an uncontrolled major traffic uh, artery, industrial or commercial area or any other uh, comparable condition. And then uh, we do have a, uh, uh, an evaluation process uh, where we do look at specific routes uh, and make go from there. Yeah. If you look at just specific areas, of course, uh, 3009, 1103, uh, crossing Pat Booker. Uh, well, that's a good point. I know, I mean, in the past, we've Kind of wrangle with the cities about crosswalks and you know those kind of things. So let's say the sidewalks that are going up along the, from 309. That, that didn't change anything. Uh, once they're finished, there are a couple of areas and a couple of routes that may be impacted by that. Again, once they are they're finished with that process. Okay. So right now it's obviously not finished, so it's not going to impact right. anything just yet. Any questions? All right. Thanks, Francisco. Um, next item on the agenda is the amendment to the interlocal agreement with the City of Cibolo. Thank you, Mr. Bruski. Um, last year, the Board of Trustees approved an interlocal agreement resolution by resolution with the City of Cibolo for improvements to Bordeaux Road. Um, 
And as you can see, uh, that's just about the start part of the movie. I thought it was going to happen a little bit later, but it could be just as early as June. June. Actually, sometime it's 27. Okay. Much sooner than we thought it was going to happen. So here we are. We're, we're getting ready for them. Uh, as part of that a project, something that they had on their bond that we did not include in our original resolution was a water line improvement project on Deeds Road. Uh, we can benefit from this project because the increase of water capacity uh, would uh, provide more water for our uh, campus. And uh, we've already checked with our bond council that the bond proceeds can be used to uh, oversize those utility lines to that school campus. Let's see, the estimated amount is not to exceed the $52,500. And it can be finished as early as that August before August. Great. That's just a discussion item. There's a, uh, a proposed verbiage for an amendment, and uh, we'll be talking more about that a little bit later. Uh, our intent is to uh, include this verbiage on an interlocal uh, cooperation agreement, include that in the actual interlocal cooperation agreement. In our board resolution last year, um, we anticipated the city coming back with the interlocal agreement back to us uh, to execute. After we passed the resolution, that interlocal agreement actually never occurred. So uh, they're about to start uh, next week. The resolution was passed by our board. Uh, we just don't have the agreement in paperwork uh, in hard copy. We checked with their legal. Our legal, and uh, we're drafting that for them. We're going to go ahead and include the water line uh, along with the previously board approved or felt expansion. So it'll be one document later on tonight. Um, any questions on that? So we have to we have to vote to to make it. The adjustment so that we can work with the city to make sure we don't, we don't have to change any, anything after the fact. Is that what, how I understand it? If, we're, if we don't take any action, then we don't have an updated. Right, our current board resolution approved improvement to work out road and then to uh, the city to draft and local agreement, same such. Uh, we don't have anything about the water. So we want to amend that to add the water line to that uh, resolution so that we can benefit from this and improve water infrastructure for our campus. But I'm just appreciative of the value that could have a lot of detail. And we, and we don't want to dig twice. That's a good way to put it, though. The timing worked out. That, well, we did we know this before the original agreement was made. So right. There we Originally, everything was about the road, the road, the road, and now they're taking the time. Now they're, they're taking the economies of scale and saying we could upgrade the water looping system. We could do this. They are proposing to do more fell water and proposing that the district do deeps and then tie it in. Right. That's a good way to we're going to take a Where did they estimate the cost come from? I came from the city of Cibolo. Yes, we looked at it. Well, we, we've looked at it, yes, and it did come in to where it's conceivable as, as yes, we're fine. But the, the, the resolution is that it says not, not C, yes, 52,500 for our share. Okay. Any further questions? All right, let's move on. Uh, next item, also Mr. Rivera, uh, commands at Borkfeld right of way easement to the city of Cibola. I'm sorry, uh, commands at easement to GVAC due to Borkfeld Road improvements. Uh, we have an overhead power line uh, parallel to Borkfeld Road. So the city of uh, Cibola is expanding Borkfeld Road. It's going to push that overhead power line about another 50 feet into our property. So GVDC is going to require uh, an expansion of easement of 50 feet onto our property. This is a discussion item, this particular uh, item here. Um, <coughs> GVDC uh, 
would have to uh, pay fair market value. I spoke with them about that. Uh, they, they don't. Um, they weren't keen on that idea, but they said because Cibolo, it was because of Cibolo doing this road expansion that they're they're forced to do this. So they're going to get with Cibolo. You're going to whatever we charge them, they're going to take to Cibolo. Somehow I think it might even come back to us. But uh, anyway, they have to pay fair market value. Yeah. It's a small strip of land, but it's still the code. Everybody's got to move from these feet this way. All right, seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Uh, next item will be the command support for the right of way easement to the city of Cibolo. Uh, this is all about the road, the road tonight again. She was saying, uh, Borkfell Road. Uh, we have to give some of our land up in order to, to enjoy that right of way, the expansion of the road, the benefit we're going to receive from that new turn lane. Um, I think I included a picture of that. Oh, so there's a couple of these photos here. So the drawings has a picture of that. Um, they're going to uh, pay us the consideration for the value of this for the first picture of that land as well. Thank you. And that's beginning very soon. Thank you, Mr. Kruski. It's kind of hard to see, but you can, the the new is the, the pink, or I don't know what other color that is. Oh. Um, as you can see, it'll come out better. Basically, they're going to increase the the roadway, there we go. There. So, in some areas, the, the right of way will encroach upon our prop the district property. And then here's the new sidewalk. <coughs> you can see uh, the aforementioned GBEC rack, the power rack here, that's going to have to move out of the way because it's right there over the sidewalk. So, that, that's why they're having to move. Everything's basically shifting. Uh, some on ours and then some on the other side as well. So it's a uh, part of what we dealt with on the, the interlocal discussion as Matt mentioned earlier. Uh, this is kind of busy and rough, but it's what we what we are required to do when you upgrade or do what we're doing to do. So basically now to increase the road, they have room, it's gonna be on our our part part of the problem. They gotta take some of the right way. Index. 
So that it wouldn't be arbitrary. with that or will that be outside of their no they are a participant with us some of them, some of it not all of it we do clinicals at hospitals around but as far as emergency technicians yes that assist with that our CTE classes so we've had write outs at the San Antonio Fire Department we've had high school students and I didn't know if they would be able to do write outs with shirts EMS also that's a great idea for us for can I stay away to our next agenda Okay. Absolutely. Because that is exactly what you're describing, Mr. Westbrook, is what our CTE program would like to do. Uh, the emergency medical technician program is in place at several school districts in the state of Texas already. I think you've experienced one. Or when they graduate, I know Ms. Molly wants to add at the end of this, but when they graduate, uh, they can be an EMT. They have the skill that they can take out on the street with them. And Sorry. If you have any questions about the EMT program uh, and our CTE program in relation to that, uh, I would say Mr. Holmes would be the best source, but he's not here this evening, but we do have some people from SAS here that might be able to, if you brought that to them, then we would be very That's it. Thanks. It's a great program. Oh, it is. Uh, San Antonio utilizes it for uh, SAISD. So. That's all. Thanks. I, I actually had a, uh, an EMT from the UK visit me last week about uh, visiting from the UK. I told him about that program, and he was just really very excited about that. I wish we could do that there. Very good. Okay. Thanks, man. Uh, just for the boards, making you aware, um, next to agenda items number 9 and 10, we're going to do those in close session. Uh, moving on to number 11, solicitation for armored car services. Mr. Rivera. Uh, the purpose of this solicitation to uh, obtain an agreement with an armored car carrier firm to provide armored car services to our district on a, uh, all our campuses where we collect receipts on a daily basis. Uh, historically, our cost has been less than $50,000. It's been around $30,000 per year. Uh, however, there is a the possibility that this can come to price bring that to you uh, next month, no matter what the cost is. If it's lower, it'll still be here. Uh, if it's higher, it will be here. Uh, this is a great thing, uh, having these services. Uh, uh, prior to that, the district has done what many, well, I would say many, but some other districts have done it. They've collected those pieces themselves and transported that, and I can get an amen from our child nutrition department that they would rather have a harm Questions about that? All right, thanks, man. Uh, last item from Adam. Solicitation for Braille Translation Services. Uh, the purpose of this solicitation is to have experienced firms in providing Braille transcription services for our visually impaired students. Uh, the documents that could be transcribed could include the illusion textbooks, workbooks, worksheets, and after the materials that are requested by the district. Our intention is to award the one or more contractors for use on a as needed basis. Uh, having a contract will provide us a shorter acquisition lead time we know where to go and the pricing. Uh, funding for any resulting contract would be provided under the general operating fund. It's not known if this uh, contract would reach or exceed the board policy contract threshold of 50000 uh, However, it's possible. Uh, one book alone, depending on the book, would cost $70,000 in transcribing the populist book. One textbook to 70 volumes of the brain. So depending on the book, it actually Discussion item for the time. That is, I mean, we did do that. Was this, we've, done, we've done this before. Something very similar. We joined a uh, Region 4 uh, a lot textbook rail, uh, rail clubs who could have their services. Uh, we received a request from staff to go out on our own as well okay. uh, to, to give them more options. Because the, the one we did before was 
specifically for textbooks, what the router was. It was used specifically for us to transcribe that calculus book. Okay. All right. And this is going to be for whatever items? It could be anything big or small. Right. Okay. Okay. Anything further? I grew up with Braille. My father was born. And so I know quite a bit about Braille. A lot of the services that they do provide. So thank you. So do we still have a contract for the other one, for Region 4? For... Yes, sir. So when does that expire? It renews automatically unless it's permanent. So we're going to be using we both could, services at the same time? to be used. Sometimes uh, staff turnover sometimes happens at different agencies. Uh, for instance, another local education service center not too far from us also provides the service. Uh, but the staff has no quality of the Braille transcription is not quite what they would prefer. So uh, the comfort of the staff and the product that we provide our students, uh, they would like to have more options. Okay. Sort of where they can get the best product they Thank you. Any further questions? All right. Yeah, just for the boards. Um, board's value. Um, those are all discussion items, and our next uh, regularly scheduled meeting, we'll have all of those items come back as action items other than uh, item number one. And item number nine, we're going to discuss in closed session. We'll decide what we'll do with those later. So, um, if you have any questions or things come up during the course of the next month, feel free to call the administration and uh, address those questions. Okay? Quick question. Yes, sir. You said item number one. Yeah. This is a report. So all, all the other. Oh, I got you. Okay. 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 Yeah. Right. Next one. Um, all right. Next is the consent agenda. We have seven items on the consent agenda. Does any board member want or wish to pull any of those items for individual discussion? All right. So if none. Um, we have a motion to approve the consent agenda items. Mr. President, I move that the board. Sorry, Mr. President, I move. Make the motion and move that. The, we accept the consent items on the agenda tonight. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a motion to second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Any opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Right. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. I know we normally have to take a break at this time, but we, we do have agreements here at 8 o'clock. So just as a courtesy to them, I want to make sure we're done as much as we can before that time. Uh, at this point, we have the action items, a request for board action. Adoption of the employee compensation package for school year 16-17. Uh, Mr. Skinny and Ms. Kim. Yes, Mr. Skinny is handing you a uh, page change to the compensation packet for the intermediate stipends to add a title change um, as a suggestion today. Pay structures are designed and administered for the purpose of attracting and training qualified employees to achieve your district goals. Compensation packages may include wage and salary structures, stipends, benefits, and incentives. Superintendent or designation of administer and maintain pay systems in accordance with administrative regulations for the district's compensation package. Change to the previous package uh, this year are noted in bold and italics. The attached compensation package includes all tasks and recommendations, including equity adjustments, stipend increases, and a 3% salary increase for all employees based on the midpoint of each pay grade structure as, per, as presented in previous budget discussions. Any further discussion? Questions? Any 
So again, this has been vetted through HR composition. Um, you guys feel comfortable moving forward? Three percent is slightly more than I think most districts are giving. Safety center. I, I got a question, Peggy. That what you handed us the, the stipend. The ones that are bolded are those the ones that increased? There were some adjustments made to those. There was additional stipends added to the intermediate level uh, to include two persons to help with that position on the stipends. Okay, so, added the title. So the bolded, the bolded ones are they the addition or are they the increases? There's there some both? additions. It's both. Okay, thank you. And I'll just throw this out there. I know Linda, you and I have talked about this a week or so ago. Just and I never thought about it. But a couple of coaches brought it to my attention that stipends really aren't contingent upon how long someone serves as a coach. And some, somehow that kind of this seems inherently unfair. First year assistant coach gets the exact same stipend as a 25 year assistant coach. And having said that, I, I assume that's just sadly the way it is, right? That's the way the districts do it. And, Probably be overly complicated to try to have it any other way. Yeah. The stipends are meant to pay for the additional duties that they might work uh, beyond their salary. Right. Okay. Everybody understand that? That, that? that question just came up to me, and so we, Linda and I talked about it. So. Um, everybody okay? Where we're at? All right, we do have a motion and a second on, on the floor. Uh, all those in favor to approve the 2016-2017 compensation package, please raise your right hand. Any opposed, same sign? Okay, motion passes unanimous. And again, just uh, in light of our internal surveys, let's continue to promote the fact that we are a fairly high-paying district and we value the employees and do our best to compensate them accordingly. Right, next item on the agenda, um, board approval, or request for board approval, new positions for school year 16-17 of Ms. Cannon. We're requesting additional special education instructional support. Um, it's necessary to meet the increased needs of our special education students. The funding would come from the special education federal programs and would be used to fund all the requested special ed positions. We're also requesting some pre-K positions um, to uh, establish a highly qualified pre-K program in our district for the state guidelines. And the district applied for a state pre-K grant to be used those funds for the additional instructional assistant positions. Mr. President, I move that the Board of Trustees approve the attached new position list for the 2016-2017 school year as presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please raise your right hand. Any opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Right, next item up uh, request for board approval, solicitation 16-024B for district legal services. Mr. Rivera. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, and Dr. Gibson, uh, the district has issued solicitations for uh, professional services periodically for uh, such uh, professions as external auditors, design firms, and other engineering services. In June of 2011, the board approved the uh, current district recommendation for our current legal services uh, firm. A new solicitation was issued. As a matter of practice, not any measure of any dissatisfaction with the services we had received. Uh, in response to this, uh, well, legal counsel can add value in many different ways. The reason why school districts have legal counsel is because there's so many different laws. Uh, that affect us on the meeting tax, as you're well aware, the Public Information Act that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. First Amendment, Fourth Amendment, FERPA, ADA, IDEA, FLSA, FMLA, and Title Seven, Title Nine, and I'm sure there's some others out. Uh, we had uh, several administrators who helped us review the four packages we did receive back. We looked at the general legal experience of the firm. We looked at their experience related to education and school districts and their legal experience in the state of Texas. The experience and reputation of their principal partners, professionals, their client list, and their references. As expected, the references all did come back uh, very well. Uh, however, uh, our selection committee selected uh, two top firms to represent our interests of the four responses we received. Now, the district has at times in the past selected multiple firms. Uh, 
some uh, work for special education, some uh, specialized in HR law, and uh, others in contract law. Uh, each of the firms who did respond was very capable. Some had larger practices than others. And our recommendation was for uh, Walsh Gallegos at number one. And I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce that right. Beaker. Sorry? Beaker. Thank you. Associates at number two. I know Flower Bluffs uh, superintendent did not speak highly enough of them according to these. I had heard of them prior to this. Um, just for the board's information, I, I worked at one of these firms previously, so I'm just going to repeat myself on the time comes for both. But, uh, as far as questions go, have we worked with Beaker and Associates before? Not our district, however, I think some of our staff have in the past that have been part of the district. I think they uh, represent North and West Coast. Uh, Is that for a particular type of services, or are they just generalized that far? Well, they can use all, but special education is their forte. Then yeah. what? Do we usually use Martin or? That work, we did have them on the list, and it seemed to trail off. But we, this, that is a complicated area of the law, and gets more complicated every year. And quite frankly, they're just a handful of lawyers in my opinion that are staying up, so the front end of the changes on the staff. And we, we may use Walsh Gallegos, but you know, we're not limiting that. And I kind of like the fact that some of the options there for different um, events. Questions from the board members? Okay. Right. We have a motion. Mr. President, I move that the board of trustees approve the firm's indi indicated for legal services for solicitation number 16-024B under a non exclusive agreement and acknowledge that funds are available for these services. And second. Right. Motion second. and second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. No, no I got a question. I'm yeah, sorry. Right. Thank you for the discussion. Uh, yeah, thank you. Right. Um, Betsy Holbender, did she not? I mean, is this? We received no uh, response from from Betsy. Okay, just curious. I mean, is this? I mean, I, I'm assuming this is where she would have uh, done that. Also, um, when the board needs representation that's outside the district, does that fall into this as well? Typically, in the past, the press has utilized. Wall you know, when we get Chris, is that is that who Chris works for? No, okay, just the, all right. The, the Okay, well, that's just my, my question was that, uh, you know, because a lot of times we use someone completely different than what uh, uh, the, the, the district rests. It's Walsh Gallegos and a different All right. Okay, thank you. That's a very good point, Mr. Walsh. And actually, having two firms would make it crystal clear that there are two separate uh, entities involved here, two separate agencies. It's another option for having two firms. Right. Okay, thank you. And yeah, just put on my turning hat here for the new board members, just, you know, the lawyers, ethical duties to represent the school district, which is the school board. But the reality is, is the administration that works with them more often. So what we're basically doing is we're approving these two firms. They still represent us, they're, they're legal duties to us, but the day-to-day -day phone calls go back and forth with the administration and the law firm. And if there does happen to come a time when the board itself needs separate legal counsel, separate and distinct from the administration, then, then as a board, we would decide what we would do at that point. Be the superintendent hiring the attorneys for us. Okay. Sometimes you use the same firm, but a different attorney from a different office, or uh, different ways to handle that if one of the time comes up. Okay? All right. Anything else, Mark? Good. Okay, so we have a motion and a second on the table here. Uh, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Any opposed, same sign. And I'm going to recuse myself or abstain so the, that passes 6 0 to 1 abstention. Okay. All right, next item on the agenda uh, request for board approval. Uh, solicitation for construction and management services, Mr. Rivera and Mr. Bruschi. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, and Dr. Gibson, uh, we've issued a solicitation uh, for construction management services uh, in anticipation and hopeful anticipation that our community will uh, pass the future bond for the next construction program. Uh, but even if they really didn't, we found value in having construction management services. Uh, and uh, helping us to deliver the projects on time and on budget. Uh, that's one thing that we can speak very highly of our current uh, contract management team, and they are our recommendation. Uh, now, they were also the only uh, proposal that we received in response to our solicitation. Uh, 
And when I spoke to them earlier about that, and, um, I wanted to encourage them because they're doing something good. Uh, many of these firms are speaking with our legal counsel when I asked them why do we only get one proposal is uh, the way that we uh, packaged our solicitation was for request for proposals. We were looking for contract management services. Uh, more and more of these uh, contract management uh, services are uh, pushing them for presenting themselves as uh, design teams or engineering teams, and so they want to respond to uh, professional design services by the look for an architect. Uh, but that's not the service we're looking for. We're looking for contract management. When they do present themselves under an RFQ format, they would expect 6% easily of a construction project. So 6% of an elementary school will cost. Well, that's actually where an architect comes. And the architect's doing a lot of design. So they're being well paid around the state using that format. Uh, we uh, have been going about half that rate using our hourly rate and our RFQ. So we're very pleased with the way that we're, uh, the process we have. We talk to our council, the RFP is exactly what we should be doing. And uh, the work that they've been providing, I could let um, Mr. Boosie say some words if he has anything positive to say about ABC. If he doesn't, I will. Board of Directors. 
Um, I guess I'll take care of this one. Uh, we talked about this last time, but uh, Gilbert Flores, who's the current Justin ISD board members, uh, currently sits on the TASB board representing Region 20. I believe it's Position 20 D. Uh, he's decided to, to no longer serve on that board as of October, I believe it is. So a seat is becoming available. Um, every district in Region 20 uh, can nominate someone from their own board to serve on that. And there's a process that that person then has to go through to ultimately get the position. But the first phase is to nominate someone to, to seek the position. And, uh, I've been working with Robert here for several years now. He's highly involved in Region 20. He goes to plenty of the conferences, other events. Um, and Robert, you can talk to yourself. Why, why we should support you here? No. <laughs> 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 I'm sure we'll be probably paid manager. Yeah, he's the campaign manager. Yeah. Okay. Just sort of seeking a second opportunity outside of the uh, Church Civil Independent School District Board to serve at a higher level. I've seen uh, Gary Inman uh, do it when I first joined the board. He was the board president. Uh, of course, our superintendent is superintendent of Region 20. So I think this is a great time to sort of get more involved, you know, at a higher level and have great resources uh, between Gary Inman and Dr. Gibson uh, to sort of promote our agenda for Region 20 at the state level and move forward. And uh, I'm just looking forward to serving doing the best I can. It's a great opportunity for this district. And, uh, Region 20. You go, Region 20 goes all the way down to, to the border, like Maverick County. So, uh, but I think we're going to come up with an agenda after talking with Dr. Gibson. Come up with an agenda that we can promote for the whole Region 20. And that's what I was, That's what I plan on doing. Here we go. Okay. And so, so Didi, technically, the board votes to nominate Mr. Westbrook to become a candidate, but then he has to actually fill out an application, yes. which um, the due date is, has to be received by June 30th. Okay, with that? Yes, sorry. Okay, good. Okay. Um, we have a motion on this item. Mr. President, I move that the Board of Trustees nominate Robert M. Westbrook for the ESC Region 20 DC on the TASB Board of Directors. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion or questions on Mr. Westbrook? No? All right, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Any opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Once again, we have a high standard here in SCUC, so we expect you to get the position. Uh, <laughs> All right. Um, last item on the action items here, request for board approval, leadership task be class of 2017 applications for Mr. John Perot. Um, yeah, we've talked about this before as well. Um, Mr. Crow, do you have anything you want to add or say on this item? I didn't get to go to the SLI with the call, so I'm going to the one next week in Fort Worth um, to make up the 36 hours here that I have. So um, as long as I get those, I think um, we'll have 36 hours. I, I did the one last month. Okay. Um, so I, no, I, did, I should have everything. I already got the application. Not because I don't like Robert. Amy and Jerry, I know it's a few numbers. Haven't gotten SLI this weekend. You probably have a sense of what their strategy is. So just for years, we had we had a kind of rolling thing of one board member going through the program at a time. And it's an excellent program, and I certainly commend Mr. Crow for uh, shooting for his first year. And even if you don't get it, it gets your word out or your name out there, and you just continue to apply. And no doubt you get in at some point. So it's, it's definitely good. It's good for our school district, good for our school board. And um, I think you know, we, we probably had more members graduate from that than just about any other district out there uh, over the years. So. Um, do we have a motion on that agenda? Mr. President, I move that the Board of Trustees approve John Perot to submit the leadership task class of 2017 application and acknowledge that funds are available for the expenditure if accepted for his enrollment. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or questions? He will never be better than uh, leadership task class of 2013. Oh. <laughs> do you know anybody in that class? I'm just saying, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> all, right. uh, all those in favor of uh, approving Mr. Perot, uh, raise your right hand. Any opposed, same sign. Okay. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, I want to say you can respond to our voters. D, what's the deadline on that? That is also, uh, I think it's July 1st. Okay. You know, that's one of those tricky things. Does it have to be in their hands on July 1st, or do we just have to get it in um, on July 1st? 
Kelsby yeah. said that uh, since he's going to the uh, Fort Worth uh, conference, that as soon as it's completed, we can see that. Right. Okay. All right. You guys work with DD to coordinate to make sure we get those, those things in. All right. Um, 755. Uh, if this, for those of you that are still here, uh, we're going to go into closed session here in a little bit. But we'll, we'll take a recess for about about five minutes. But after we do the recess, we are then going to go into closed session uh, to do agreements as well as some other personnel type issues, which may take quite a bit of time. So I thought we probably won't come back out of open session for 30 minutes or more once we go into closed session. Just to let you know. So at uh, this time, the board will recess for a quick break. It's, uh, if everyone will be back in your seats at 8 o'clock, that will be great. Yes. And 06 p.m. Um, the only items we discussed in closed session were items regarding the employment of protection personnel, as well as uh, several different uh, items pertaining to real property. Uh, this time we'll move on to the uh, action items. Uh, first, first board action, employment of contractual personnel. Ms. So. The positions on the employment list as presented are replacing and filling new budgeted positions for the 16-17 school year. Uh, do we have a motion? To approve. I move the board of trustees approve the employment list as presented for contractual personnel for 2016-2017 school year. Second. Do we have a motion to second? Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Any opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next item. Uh, conveyance of easement of North Texas. Property drainage created in the utilities of Mr. Rivera. That's right. Sorry, the purpose of that agenda item is to address some forthcoming easements to the current owner of the Vortex development. The easements requested are three classifications draining uh, and grading easements, utility easements, and the, uh, access easements. Yeah. Um, we have a motion. I move that the Board of Trustees approve conveyance of easements as discussed in closed session and authorize the superintendent to finalize the agreement and the board president to subsequently e execute the conveyance. Second. We have a motion second. Uh, any further discussion or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Any opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and review the board master calendar if possible. Is anyone aware of any items coming up here over the next month? Do you? Just your discussion items from tonight. Um, um, when's the next two board meetings? The next, uh, we have the called meeting on the uh, 16th. 19th. I'll have my Tuesday.
sir.